Good afternoon, everyone. This is Mike O'Malley here with the Hurricane Outlook and discussion for November 8th, 2020, recorded around 2.40 p.m. Eastern Time. While well, taking a wide look across the tropical Atlantic this afternoon, we have two systems really of interest. First of all, obviously, with Tropical Storm Ada, which is located right now to the south and west of Andrews Island in the Bahamas, which is located right here, the center of circulation sitting right about in here, in a widespread area of impacts occurring from central Florida all the way down to the Bahamas and still Cuba. And this onshore flow is going to be persisting over the next several days. So look towards an increase of heavy rainfall uh, across portions of South Florida in the Florida Peninsula over the next several days. And then we are also watching another area of disturbed weather, which has a 20% chance of developing a disturbance is expected to form in this area over the next several days. And a 20% chance has been designated for that. And we'll talk about that here in just a little while. Now, if we take a look here at the closer invisible satellite uh, for ADA, we can see that a couple of things have happened since yesterday. Obviously, uh, the most foremost thing, the storm has crossed over Cuba. The storm has uh, made, it made landfall last night over Cuba and traversed a relatively uh, semi-flat train of Cuba. Now has started that turn kind of generally towards the north. And we're making that sharp bend towards the west later today and impact the Florida Keys by making landfall sometime tonight. Now, there is hurricane warnings in effect for these areas as this could be a hurricane on approach. But you can very clearly see that a lot of dry air has been entrained into the center of circulation with almost an exposed low level center here. And again, there's still strong vertical wind shear coming out of the southwest blowing towards the northeast. Uh, so we have strong vertical wind shear that's still helping to tilt this vortex and also induce a pathway for relatively stable dry air uh, on the back side of this upper level low. Now, as this continues to kind of pivot around, this becomes in a more favorable environment going into tonight. And that's when its best chance to strengthen is later today into tonight it has its best chance to strengthen into a hurricane uh, before impacting the Florida Keys late tonight and early tomorrow morning. Now, again, if we take a look here at the rest of the features, we can see a very large stretch of onshore wind here pushing all of these showers and thunderstorms basically inland. And if we take a look here at the radar from Mark Missenbaum's site over at Florida State University, and we look at the Miami radar, we can really see this happen. We'll kind of stop it here at the very uh, end of the loop right here. And, and a couple of things you'll, you'll want to note. This is the inner core structure associated with ADA. So this is the inner core and the supposed center somewhere in this area right in here. And again, after crossing Cuba, now it's kind of moving towards the north and then eventually taking that sharp bend back towards the west later today and tonight. So again, you notice though that a large amount of showers and, and uh, convection is located towards the north and east of the storm. And there's a large fetch of onshore flow. And if we go back and if we actually uh, pull this back here and just kind of zoom this out a little bit more, you'll be able to really see that. And again, uh, what you'll uh, kind of eventually find is that there is a very broad area of convection that is over this area, very broad area because of this onshore flow. And that is going to eventually, as the storm starts to kind of pull more towards the west here, this onshore flow is going to start wrapping back around into the circulation. So you'll probably get a moist pocket to develop around the storm where it has a chance to strengthen. Uh, but the the broader perspective is that this is going to provide days upon days of heavy rainfall to not only the Bahamas, but also Florida and portions of South or North Cuba, and even portions all the way down here and towards uh, Puerto Rico and uh, the Dominican Republic. This onshore flow, you know, this over a broad area is creating showers and thunderstorms over this area too. So it's still creating some impact all the way down uh, loosely associated with that onshore flow. And again, you can see on the Miami radar, uh, all of these storms that's going to be moving uh, generally towards the Florida Peninsula and South Florida in the Keys over the next couple of hours. Now, based on the overall track forecast here, the chain, the 
forecast reasoning has not changed necessarily that much. Uh, you can see as of the 10 o'clock uh, advisory for the forecast cone, you can see a hurricane warning is in effect for portions of South Florida. This again is expected to become a hurricane. Now the tropical storm force wind field is not overly expansive. Again, this tropical storm force wind field is not expansive, but what's helping the tropical storm warnings here across portions of East Central Florida is this broad onshore flow on the kind of the side here on the northeast side of the storm. And again, this kind of onshore flow is creating breezy conditions right along the coastline. And then, of course, out here across portions of west central Florida, we have tropical storm watches and warnings uh, for the expected impact that, again, you can see the storm expected to take that western dive and even may dive west-southwest here by uh, Tuesday. But eventually it remains a hurricane and starts to slowly weaken on approach back into Florida. So again, we may be dealing with this for quite some time around in the Florida Peninsula uh, because this is not expected to overall move much. We'll talk about the reasoning behind that very shortly. Now, with this broad onshore flow, again, that the wind is pushing like this onshore, that is going to create the threat for some storm surge. And in fact, from north of Golden Beach all the way over into southeast Georgia, there is expected to be about one to two feet of storm surge that is possible. So again, it's not overwhelmingly high storm surge values, but this is something to be mindful of. You could be dealing with some overwash in some locations. And then especially down here in South Florida and the Florida Keys, two to four feet of storm surge above normally dry ground including uh, really uh, Bunka Beach all the way down towards uh, Boca Raton and Golden Beach and then the dry, uh, you know, Tortigas uh, and obviously Key West could see the threat for isolated, you know, two to four feet storm surge above normally dry ground. So this is going to be one of those situations that it is going to be a very dangerous situation going forth with time. So it's just something to be mindful of. And of course, that very heavy rainfall piling up down here uh, really from Lake Okeechobee southward is going to be the heaviest rainfall. And then a secondary batch of heavy rainfall from about the I-95 corridor to Melbourne, uh, Bavard Volusia County line, Tampa, Metro Orlando southward uh, could see anywhere from about two uh, really to four inches of rainfall uh, in the northern part here. So that's just very important to understand. Now, our storm is going to undergo some very drastic changes in direction over the next 12 to 24 and 36 hours. And one of the main reasons is because this is now encompassed within a broad upper level low. And we were talking about how this upper level low would kind of uh, consolidate in, into the storm's circulation. Again, this upper level low started out here and it did exactly what we were expecting it to several days ago. We, we kind of called it there and said that it was going to move generally the forecast you know was for it to move and get then entrained into the circulation and what that has done is now it's going to create a very erratic path for the storm so if we go out here in time we can see 30 hours from now what's happened is there's the circulation of the storm but notice there's a very broad upper level low that is a uh, broadened out in here what we're looking at is the GFS 500 millibar flow in the atmosphere. And you can see a very broad upper level low here that is kind of, you know, turning counterclockwise. So in essence, it's trying to push our storm generally towards the west and then eventually going southwest. And we also have a big ridge out here to the northwest of that, which is just kind of sitting out here near Bermuda. And this is also expanding but pushing eastward. And at the very same time, we have another ridge that's trying to develop out here, but this trough is digging in. And again, the jet stream pattern, those mainly curling from southwest, curling towards north and east. And then we also have a secondary ridge right here. So at this point in time, the storm is kind of confined within a very weak steering flow pattern because you've got multiple competing factors, but none of them are really winning out at this point. So if we go forth with time now, the storm actually could dive west-southwest for a while, and then maybe even south for a while, uh, ending up near the western tip of Cuba, then eventually uh, picking steam up here. This is by Thursday or you know, going into Thursday or Wednesday evening, going into Thursday 
uh, early Thursday morning, we can see that, again, we still have a big ridge sitting out here uh, toward the north and west of Bermuda, this big high out here. We also have another high pressure out here that's kind of shrinking, and then the jet uh, stream and the approaching trough that is kind of picking the storm up. So what we have is steering flows that range from a storm that's just kind of meandering out here to now this trough beginning to try to pick the storm up. Because again, you can imagine this anticyclonic flow around the trough here it, or around this ridge of high pressure that's trying to build south here into Mexico uh, would be kind of forcing the storm generally one towards kind of the north and trying to bend it northwest. But you've also got this uh, ridge of high pressure here that is also trying to kind of steer the storm uh, back towards really the northwest. So you've got two steering flows here, but then you also have this trough, which is trying to steer the storm generally towards the north and east. So you've got competing steering flows, and the storm is going to be kind of confined with them. And you can see that the GFS forecast here eventually kills the storm off. It just remains stuck within this very broad steering pattern. You can see this ridge, you know, ridge builds back in. We go mostly to a zonal flow in some retrospects, and then another trough begins to dig down here late in the week, and that will be digging down. And we can see that kind of happen, that we have another trough. And again, this upper level pattern still remains that we still have some upper level energy out here, even through next Saturday, loosely associated with ETA. Now, whether or not this is actually ETA or not, again, remains a big question, but we still have something associated at least in the mid-level energy, and then finally this trough comes, and this uh, low energy, whatever is here, should be out of here by that time. But this is very interesting. Now, if we go to the Euro forecast, the European, again, this is uh, 24 hours from now, so by 7 a.m. tomorrow morning, this is already now well to the uh, west of the Keys here. This is now moving towards the west. And again, you can see this big ridge of high pressure building over top of the storm. Now, again, we also have this trough and another ridge trying to build back over here. So the storm is going to be stuck for a while. And you can see this actually dives into the western part of Cuba, lifts northward, possibly as a hurricane, uh, continues to move it, and then starts weakening it on approach and then moves it up into the Florida panhandle. Uh, now, for instance, models like the H-Wharf, this is the... Uh, 12Z H war from the 500 millibar charts. And again, we can clearly see that storm rotating around. This bend to the west is likely going to occur because this trough and this upper level low is inducing that westward turn. And then with building uh, pressures over here out across the northwest Atlantic, uh, this is likely to start to turn the storm more towards the west. Now, if we go with time here, we'll move this out. Again, the storm uh, possibly takes even a west-southwest dive uh, here by uh, early Tuesday. Now, again, you have this trough that's approaching, but out here you do have a little bit of a ridge that's trying to establish itself, and this is now being picked up on most models. Eventually, this trough, it digs in, but you still have a big ridge out here and another ridge kind of sitting out here. So what happens is the storm is still in a very weak steering environment near the western part of the Florida Peninsula, and it's still just staying there. It's not really moving all that much, and eventually the storm just actually succumbs to dry air and vertical wind shear, but even by Friday, we're still dealing with something off the Florida coast. So this could be not only a prolonged period of, of just meandering storm, but if we actually go back and we take a look here at the 700 to 400 millibar relative humidity, this is in the upper part of the atmosphere, and what we're really looking for is the greens here. This is, indicates all of our very moist air in the atmosphere, and conversely, these browns is very dry air, and you can see what's taking a toll on the storm right now is the very fact that we have dry air in the storm environment and we're not able to get a con consolidated core to develop. Uh, however, you can see this very big stretch of onshore flow that's going to be rotating around here. So what's likely to happen in places that have been dry, like Metro Orlando, Melbourne, etc., you're likely to get some very heavy rainfall coming in towards late night. This is by uh, 4 p.m. today, so this is within about the next hour. This onshore flow is now starting to come in. And again, you can see here, this is by 1 a.m. The storm is now approaching the Florida Keys. 
this broad onshore flow still rotating around here. This is broad onshore flow, but you can see this dry air now starting to wrap even further into the storm. Now, if we move this forward, you can see what starts to happen. We still get dry air. All of this dry air is not really going anywhere because there's no forcing mechanism to really clear this dry air. Uh, however, what does end up happening is given enough days here in the model forecast, if you give it a, a, enough time, uh, it will start to mix out this dry air. It will start to mix out the boundary layer dry air. You'll start to end up getting a very moist inner core to develop here. And that's what actually happens. You can see there is still some dry air, but the pressure actually falls back into the mid 960 millibar range. This would suggest that we could be looking at a hurricane out here uh, by Wednesday or so. And this could be a pretty formidable hurricane in the central Gulf. Again, you have the loop currents that are uh, coming through this region out and through here, kind of the Gulf Stream. And it's not near the shelf waters, which are much cooler uh, this time of the year. Again, we've had several cold fronts come in through here. But this loop current is very important because it's a continuous fetch of warm air uh, and, and warm water. And that warm water tends to have more instability with it. That tends to be able to build more thunderstorm activity. So all of the signs are there pointing towards a potential potent hurricane uh, in the central Gulf of, or kind of in the east central Gulf of Mexico by Wednesday. Now, if we move this forward in time, we can still see the storm is still strengthening here. And again, this moisture plume, all of these greens are stretched out, of, of, you know, through hundreds and thousands of miles. We see all of this moisture plume being stretched out all the way in, even to Pennsylvania and all the way through Massachusetts. This very moist uh, atmosphere is going to occur where there is going to be heavy rainfall, not even in Florida, but even across the southeast and northeast United States, all the way up until Massachusetts. Uh, again, this big ridge here kind of forcing air around it. And also because of an approaching trough, you're going to get moisture that's just strung out here. So we could be even looking at somewhat of a flooding potential down downstream uh, for portions of the northeastern United States as we go with time. Uh, eventually, you can see this trough kind of ends up digging in across here. We get dry air to build back in. And now the storm starts to succumb to this dry air still sitting off the Florida Peninsula here. So this would be multi, you know, a multi-day rain event, uh, not something like a Harvey or anything like that, obviously, but this would be a multi-day rain event where it'd keep the rain chances above normal, above the, climato uh, the climatological uh, mean for this time of the year, which is, you know, right around about 30 to 40 percent. Uh, so we're starting to see the signs that this could be a very long drawn out period. Now, again, some of the models today indicating a Florida landfall, uh, you know, towards mid to late week. Uh, other models, again, like the H Wharf and the H Mon, for instance, are forecasting the storm to stay offshore and not really be uh, of much wind consequence down the road. Again, we have a lot to watch here. Tropical storm watches and warnings are in effect for portions of those areas. Uh, so please take this very seriously because, again, this will be a multi day heavy rainfall event where upwards of 18 plus inches of rainfall could occur across portions of Southeast Florida. So, again, Take that in mind. We will be dealing with this for several days, but of course, I will stay on top of everything. I do plan to set out our live unmanned hurricane cameras late tonight, uh, probably somewhere around the 6.30 uh, p.m. Eastern Time time frame, and we'll be setting those out and letting it capture what it can capture here in the Metro Orlando area. Plus, we have our live weather station data, and of course, all of that will be getting uh, updated, uh, and you guys can stay up to date with that on Twitter. And of course I will have an update, uh, later this evening on YouTube. All right. Well, that being said, hope you all have a great rest of your afternoon and early evening. Of course, I am Michael Romali. I'll talk to you guys again some more earlier this or later this evening.